Call them the dolls, they're anything but. I, I do have to say, I'm dangerously close to the Zelda drip today. I am wearing the, the red old merch drop with the katakana on it, and I'm wearing khaki shorts. I'm very, they're not cargo shorts, but it's very close to the Legend of Zelda midnight release uh, outfit. I didn't notice until, uh, until I put it on today. But basically, I got to do some laundry. Dan cosplay? No, those would be if I was wearing like some black Nike basketball shorts. I think Dan's a basketball shorts sort of guy. Once you become a father, or at least like the age of a father, which I know like could be 16, but you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, I'll say 31. And no longer, I, I was not much of a fashion judger to begin with, but no longer will I judge you at all. I think it's crazy out here that people are still taking shots at dudes for wearing socks and sandals. Like, it's just, sometimes you wear socks because you like socks, and then you got to go out into the garden. You're going to take your socks off to put sandals on every time so, like, some 17-year-old kid doesn't blow up your spot on TikTok? Who cares? Oh, no, socks and sandals. Oh, this guy's got equity. Get on the bus, okay? Who cares? It's just, it's just footwear. I got more important things going on in my life. Where are we going with this? It's just, I, I don't, I'm, if any dads out there are still like, oh, I like sandals, but I also like socks. I'm just so tired of taking my socks off every time I have to put my sandals on so I don't get made fun of like uh, some high school kid. Just get over it, man. Just wear socks with sandals. If somebody goes, what are those? Pull out a $50 bill and say, hey, what is this? I don't know. Now we're just class shaming. <laughs> but you shouldn't shame anybody for any reason. So one good turn deserves another, okay? If you didn't want to be class shamed, you shouldn't shame dad's footwears. Okay. They export $10 billion, $325 million of animal hair, copper, iron, gold, coal briquettes, feldspar. I mean, so there's a lot of mining. Um, and there's animal hair. I feel like uh, this is Central Asia or Africa. These geographic locations are not necessarily my strong suit. Let's start with <clears throat> Africa. I'm going to say it's Zimbabwe. Isn't that where Mount Kilimanjaro is? I'm sure there's a lot of copper in Mount Kilimanjaro. Okay. It is going to be Central Asia. That's fine. Now we know. Uh, let's go... Call me crazy on this one. Let's go Mongolia. That is not crazy. <laughs> that was an incredibly good guess. Well, well, well. Good start today. They should make a tradal for fictional places. Yeah, I'm sure chat GPT is on it. Hey, by the way, I think I figured out, I think I teased apart some nuance in why I'm so annoyed with AI or an AI posting. I real, I was thinking about it and I was like, you know what? Maybe it's not AI's fault. Maybe it's just that the most vocal proponents of AI are not people who go like, hey, I use chat GPT to like, automate incredibly mundane rote tasks in my life. You don't see too many people like that on Twitter that are like, I had an hour of busy work and I cut it down to five minutes thanks to ChatGPT. It's always like, hey, what if uh, the future of movies is they never make you feel uh, things you didn't ever expect to feel? What if you just typed in the movie you wanted to see? What if oh, Bill Murray and Paul Rudd um, pretend to be married to each other to go to outer space with Captain Jean-Luc Picard. Like, that's the shit that irritates me. If you use ChatGPT to help you fill out, like, a spreadsheet or something like that, I have no problem with you. It's only if you're like, the Hollywood is about to change forever. ChatGPT is now capable of making the worst fucking TV shows you've ever seen. Imagine if you could make a show that where Boba Fett... Um, made out with Obi-Wan Kenobi, bro. 
Disney's going to come out with that in like nine months. You don't even have to get AI for that. Episode one, people will be like, this is the greatest Star Wars ep ever. Episode 10, they'll have like 1% of the people who started the season actually finishing it. You know how it goes. I'm saying as human beings, we're more than capable of making shitty media ourselves. We don't need a computer's help, okay? Now, we're on Globla. We don't need to guess Mongolia on this one because it just doesn't, it, it doesn't border enough countries to be useful for us. It's, it's the, you know what? Mongolia is kind of like when you get a sandwich on an airplane and you're like, whoa, Korean barbecue sandwich? That sounds delicious. And then it's two enormous buns and just like one little Mongolia-sized piece of Korean barbecue beef in the middle. And it's like either 80% fat or 80% gristle, but it's like all bun. So I'm going back to Algeria, which I think is a, a reasonably good first guess. Holy cow. <laughs> okay. Uh, 740 kilometers. Let's go crazy. Let's get nuts. Take me to France. France is adjacent to the correct answer. Take me to... Italy? Uh, Italy closer than France. Take me to, did we have Switzerland the other day or am I crazy? Did we have Switzerland the other day? Switzerland, it's not Swiss. Switzerland's cooler. I don't think it's definitely not going to be Spain. So maybe it's, maybe it's Monaco. Monaco! Danger to manifold. Okay. So far, so good. Well equipped today. World law. Mm. <laughs> Paw Patrol Heroes Unite on sale now June 3rd and 4th in Kingston. Okay, the cookies are getting closer. They're getting better. I don't live in Kingston. I was there a um, couple weeks ago. So I, and I do have a child who likes Paw Patrol. Whenever there's a problem in Adventure Bay... I don't, I don't really, she doesn't know all the lyrics. Then she just goes, Marshall, Chase, Sky, Zumba, Rubble. This looks to me to be the east coast of Africa. But I could be wrong. But it looks to me to be the east coast of Africa. Like to me, this looks like um, I am blanking here. Hey, this, I don't mean this to be insensitive, okay? I'm, I'm looking at chat. It's not insensitive. It might be ignorant. Does Somalia still exist or has it been changed? Like, it, did it become Sudan and South Sudan? It still exists. Okay. I. It's not Somalia. Somalia is right on the horn of Africa. So this then means we are across the Arabian Sea. The Red Sea, which means we are on the Arabian Peninsula, which means this is, uh, one of them is Oman and one of them is Yemen. I think this is Oman. It is Oman. Always remember from, from playing the Mamluks in Europa Universalis 4, on the Arabian Peninsula, one of the corners, like, 8 o'clock must be Yemen, and then, like, 3 o'clock is Oman. EU4 taught me geography as well. EU4 was the ge geography class that we never had in North America. I, I'm not being facetious. I was, like, pretty smart in school. If you gave me a map of Europe in 2006 when I graduated from high school and you said, well, if you said, where's Russia? I'd be like, it's right there. If you said, where's um, China? I'd be like, it's right there. I'd know Japan. You know, I know Australia, Canada, America, Mexico, et cetera, et cetera. If you said, where is Czechia? I would honestly, I would have to tap out. I would be like, I have no idea. Now I know. Five-year-olds know that? Yeah, in Europe. 
Five-year-olds in Europe be like, j'ai besoin un pain au chocolat, s'il vous plaît. Five-year-olds in North America be like, mommy, pass the Cheetos. You know, we're just, we're built different over here. So true, so true. Okay, I'll insult Europe later. Just enjoy it while it lasts, okay? Some place in Canada did build a large statue of a Cheeto like this year. So like, I, I don't have a leg to stand on. This is May 17th, 2013. 2013. It's a year after the first Avengers. Not Captain America, but the first Avengers movie. Which is important to note because this Walt Disney film, if it's not animated, is probably Marvel. Ah, 2013. Pre-Guardians of the Galaxy. This could be like Thor uh, 2, The Dark World. I mean, we're going way back. It's pre-Ant-Man 1. Is this Thor 2? It's not Thor 2. It's post-Incredible Hulk. Oh, you know what? It's probably Iron Man 3. Hey! Okay, okay, okay. Now, another a 20th century Fox film that did okay at the box office. Like, 177 million is pretty good, but for 10 weeks, it's probably not a superhero movie. It's an animation adventure, family fantasy comedy action. I'm going to leave that because the odds are, in 2013, I was not tuned into the family movie landscape. So that one's probably going to be tough. This is a Paramount Pictures movie. It opened to $83 million. It's an action adventure science fiction film starring Chris Pine. I didn't know Paramount made the Star Trek movies. This would be Star Trek Into Darkness. Okay. It's crazy that that movies were everywhere um, until like Beyond came out. Like Star Trek 2009, 2008, whatever. I saw it in theaters. I was like, this is great. Star Trek Into Darkness. I saw it on digital video. I said, this is really good. Then Beyond came out. The reviews were like, this is... Uh, maybe the best of all three, and I feel like it bombed, and then it, nobody ever talked about it ever again. Second weekend, it's at $90 million. It's a drama romance. Is 2013, could this be Fifty Shades? I feel like Fifty Shades would make more than that, though. Leonardo DiCaprio, 2013 drama romance. Director. Baz Luhrmann, it's the Great Gatsby, the rare uh, director grab here. Not a good movie. Sorry, sorry to be a hater, not a good movie. I know Baz Luhrmann redeemed himself for a lot of people with uh, Elvis, which I've not seen. I hated the Great Gatsby, though. Okay, a Paramount Pictures movie. Probably a comedy based on its anemic gross after a month. Action, crime, comedy. Any chance this... No, I feel like The Heat did better at the box office because I heard of it. Let's see, actor one. Mark Wahlberg. This could be... Dad, I feel like Daddy's Home would have Will Ferrell as first billing, but let's give it a chance, okay? Actor two, Dwayne Johnson. Here we go. I don't know. I, I just don't know it. Their American dream is bigger than yours. Every The Rock movie that's a comedy... The tagline is always like, this guy is big. One of the guys is small, and one of the guys is a lot larger. Oh, you know what this is? This is Pain and Gain! That's actually a good movie and a, a decent tagline. Okay. I was trying to, I, I just pictured like the big uh, Netflix logo, and it's like, you know, a mild-mannered accountant has to enlist an ex-convict to help him rob a bank in order to pay off his mortgage, but you wouldn't believe what happens next. I know what happens next. It gets a 4.7 out of 10 on IMDb. And then Netflix is like, we lost so much money, we need to crack down on password sharing. Okay, this one. We, we've got a great run so far. A relatively high, well, like a, a decent grossing animated movie. Good legs, you know, negative 16% is a great, uh, it's a great holdover. It's been in theaters for like two and a half months. Let's give me a tagline first. Meet the first modern family. 
The, is this the Croods? <laughs> I don't even know what the Croods is, dude. It's the Croods! It's in my head, I was like, is it the Jetsons or like the Flintstones? And then I assume the Croods is a movie about cavemen. Is that correct? Is, is it a spinoff of Ice Age? Look at that cast. So true. $135 million budget to make the Croods. Meet the first modern family. Oh, you have the plot right there. You're absolutely right. The prehistoric Croods family live in a particularly dangerous moment in time. Patriarch Grug, his mate Ugga, teenage daughter Eep, son Thunk, and feisty Gran. I, I, dude, I don't want to read anymore. I don't, I'm already sold. Anything else I read could just spoil me. When a more evolved caveman named Guy arrives at the scene, Grug is distrustful. But it soon becomes apparent that Guy is correct about the impending destruction of their world. He's not Guy? You don't think this is a... The Croods is French-Canadian. You didn't know that? Sorry, I forgot it's an American movie. Guy. Wait, I closed my stat screen. Where were we percentage-wise? Oh, we got so Croods pilled. 77? That's really good, right? It's not 23? That's great. Let's go! <laughs> I love box office game when I do well at box office game. When I don't do... Where were you when box office game was kill? I was at home watching the dolls that are anything but. When you Watanabe called and said dolls is kill, I said no. Okay. Marines, Christoph Waltz. You got me thinking, obviously, that there's like an Inglorious Bastards in here. Alien Invasion. This is Battle of Los Angeles. Not a great movie. I'm fucking confused. The D is silent. This is, Chris, this is Django Unchained. This is um, like Dentist Christoph Waltz. The D is silent. There's a movie and <laughs> there's a movie in a diner. I have only seen the trailer for this where um, angels attack the diner. I may I, I believe the movie is called Legion. Dennis Quaid, Legion, Angel, the D is silent. Okay, give me a second here. Dennis Quaid, I know this is Angel Diner, right? Okay. And then... Marines is definitely here. Angel, Legion, Diner. Bat! Dennis Quaid, Candyland... Wonder, Candyland, Aqua. <laughs> I'm fucking confused. Um, is Dennis Quaid in Django Unchained? Well, let's be honest. Okay, there's no cyborgs. There's, oh, Candyland is the name of Leonardo DiCaprio's Monticello, right? Okay, that's correct. And then Wonder, Aqua, Cyborg, Bat. I have no idea what that is. That is the Justice League. Uh, <laughs> yes, I do know what that is. And then... We had Dennis Quaid, Legion... The D is silent. <laughs> I lost it here somewhere. The D is silent? Was that with Dennis Quaid or am I crazy here? This one seems tough, with eight swaps left. What else was it? I thought it was like Diner was in here when we had that connection. I think I'm in trouble on this one. I, I, I just can't even think of that many, like... I don't even know if it is a Dennis Quaid movie, now that I'm thinking about it. So, let's use our head. Christoph Waltz, Marines, is Inglorious Bastards. But what else would that... There is a... I mean, I don't know if you'd call it a diner scene. There's a scene in a, in a tavern. 
But then I don't know which one here would be connected to Inglorious Bastards. Are they Marines? Okay, it's Cyborg. It's Alita Battle Angel with Christoph Waltz. Talk about getting lucky. <laughs> It made perfect sense once I saw it, but holy cow. Pure luck. Pure skill. It takes skill to be that lucky. Oh, bad for Inglorious Bastards. Also, I could see that. They weren't Marines. They were Bastards. Were there Marines in the Second World War? Or is that like a post-World War II branch? There were in the Pacific. Okay. The Pacific Theater? News to me. See, we're, if, if we could learn two new things as a result of the dulls every day, we're like well on our way to being the smartest person of all time, right around the same time that cognitive decline tends to kick in for men, which is pretty exciting for me. The Aviator. It's Martin Scorsese, it's Gwen Stefani, it's Leonardo DiCaprio. It's movies about rich people. It's movies, with, hang on. I see movies with Christian Bale. I see movies with Ryan Reynolds. Movies with Ryan Reynolds. The Amityville Horror, Detective Pikachu, Deadpool 2. You hear that? It's a ring. The Prestige, Christopher Nolan movies, Interstellar, Dunkirk, The Prestige. There's your gimme. Batman Begins can slide over next. Comedies. You hear that? Ryan Reynolds is also in Buried. Buried, Deadpool 2. Yeah, okay. Movies with Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> you hearing this? Somebody's doing some... I don't know. I don't know what somebody's doing up there, but it's not... It's none of my business. Buried Detective Pikachu. Let's move Amityville Horror over. No, because we can swap that with Batman Begins for free. Let's move Deadpool 2 over. Um, is there like a, like a movies with creatures? Isn't Nightmare Alley about like a freak show or something like that? Lord of the Rings got some creatures. Thor Ragnarok's got some creatures. Movies, movies about smoking pot, dude. Super Troopers, Days of Confuse, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, A Pineapple Express. Movies about the freaking the Zaza, dude. Okay, there's our free hot swap. Uh, never mind. Okay. Now let's use our brain here, okay? What the hell connects these? <laughs> Give me a second. Is Elijah Wood in all these? Sean Bean? Leonardo DiCaprio's not in all these. Guillermo del Toro's not in all of these. Are these movies based on a, a book? Yeah, Thor Ragnarok. You've never read Thor Ragnarok, bro? It goes crazy. I don't even... Well, you know, I guess I could just scroll down. Kate Blanchett! Of course! Characters, stoners, Christopher Nolan, Ryan Reynolds. Okay. Connections. Brad Pitt is in this. That could be a sneaky little connection. Is Brad Pitt not... It? Hang on here. <laughs> Did I just say Brad... Brad Pitt's in Deadpool 2, not Pineapple Express. Sorry, it's my... Brad Pitt? Brad Pitt? Brad Pitt? My Matthew McConaughey's in this. Christian Bale? Christian Bale? Hugh Jackman? Matthew McConaughey? Hugh Jackman? Chris Hemsworth, Taika Waititi, Taika Waititi, Taika Waititi, Deadpool, Deadpool. Movies filmed in Vancouver. It's probably all 16. Well, except Dunkirk. That was filmed on a soundstage. Amityville Horror. What is a horror movie? What is a remake? It's a remade movie. What is a movie based on a book? Movies based on books. Oh, you haven't read the Super Troopers book? What is movies made by Richard Linkletter? Movies based on books. Maybe The Prestige was a book. I don't know. Movies with superheroes in them. Deadpool. Thor. Batman. Ah! Jay and Silent Bob. Doesn't Silent Bob have like a... Uh, in Dogma, don't they use superpowers to like kill Matt Damon? Matt Damon? Brad Pitt? 
Matt Damon? Matt, Matt Damon is in Thor Ragnarok. Matt Damon. Ben Affleck is in Dazed and Confused. Ben Affleck is not in any of these. Other. Matt Damon's in Interstellar, though. And Matt Damon is in Deadpool, too. Matt Damon is in Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Cast, Matt Damon cameos! Oh! I didn't know Matt Damon was in Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Sometimes you just gotta cook a little bit in Cine 2 Nerdle. Is a cameo? I don't really like the... Listen, I'm not a hater. If you like it, that's fine. Reality has vindicated me over time. Um, I don't really like Kevin Smith movies. Clerks is really good. Mall Rats, I can't get over the fact that I watched it for the first time in like 2019 or 2020. It does not, is not aged well. Let's just put it that way. Maybe it was really funny at the time when it came out. I'm not hating. I really enjoyed Dogma when I saw it as a child. And then I don't think I've liked a single Kevin Smith movie since then. I never saw Chasing Amy. I never saw Jersey Girl. I did see Zack and Miri make a porno. I did see Red State. Clerk, Clerks 2. Clerks 2 I saw in theaters with someone who was a super fan of Clerks 1. They thought it was the funniest movie of all time. And I agreed under duress. I didn't think it was horrible, but I was like, I don't get why this is so funny. Also, I, I, one thing I remember about Clerks 2, took a shower, shaved, put on my nicest uh, Zelda Triforce shirt and my cargo shorts, picked her up, drove her 30 minutes to the movie theater. The movie's like 81 minutes long. It's like the prep to go see the movie was like four times longer than the movie itself. I don't really want all movies to be three hours long. We're like 81 minutes, man. We're like, come on. That's like an episode of, uh, of Tara's house. I like a two hour long movie. If I'm seeing it in the theaters, I like a two hour long movie. Once you go over two hours, I feel like you have to justify yourself a little bit. And when they get to three, we're definitely... It better be as good as Avengers Endgame. <laughs> also remember that uh, Men in Black 2. I saw that in theaters with my friends. This shit was literally like 91 minutes long. It's like the original cut came in at 87 minutes and they're like, buddy, people are not going to pay for an 87 minute long movie. So they added like four minutes of the pug farting or something. Okay. So what, I, what do I know about Volver? I know it's phrasing. I know that it has Penelope Cruz. And then I know that Matilda has Mara Wilson, uh, Rhea Perlman, Danny DeVito. We can get there. We need to get to Penelope Cruz. I'm telling you, well, I, I, for me, we need to get to Penelope Cruz. The easiest connection to Penelope Cruz, though it pains me, is going to be like Zoolander 2. I've seen this. If you need some, if you need a fucking freaky dude in your movie, this is your guy right here. This is the guy you pull into a gas station in like a small town. It's you and six of your hottest friends on the way to like a cabin in the scary woods or something like that. And like, hey, the road is out, but yeah, we'll just take the back way. This is the guy at the gas station who's like, what are you doing here? Hey, I'm trying to find a way to get to um, Hills Manor. <laughs> Hills Manor. <laughs> That's a name I ain't heard in a long time. You don't want to go that way. But if you did, there's an old utility road. Just keep your wits about you. You might just get out of here alive. You wouldn't happen to know the score of the football match, would you? Never mind. It's all fruitless now. I feel like there must be a Danny DeVito to Zoolander 2 connection. It probably involves, give me a second, Danny DeVito. There's, there's multiple ways to do this, okay? 
I'm thinking it's Danny DeVito gold member. And then there must be somebody here that was in Zoolander. <laughs> right? These are two of the biggest uh, comedies of the, of the 2000s. Right? Dude, Scott Ackerman's greatest work. What a cast. It's not, not often you end up with Tom Cruise uh, 65th built or build. Clint Howard. Michael McDonald. Stop! I'm, I'm too far down here. You remember? He does say, look what I can do. Which one of you is in Zoolander, dude? Somebody here was in Zoolander. It's crazy that Vern Troyer wasn't in Zoolander. I'm a little pissed off, honestly. I thought this was going to be easier than this. I'm a little mad, honestly. I don't know what this. You know what I. You know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go psych. I'm gonna connect psycho mode. Michael Caine, David Bowie. Sorry, Michael Caine, The Prestige, David Bowie, Zoolander One, Ben Stiller, Zoolander Two, Penelope Cruz, Volver. Okay, the the David Bowie connection. Michael Caine was in David Bowie. Brother, I wasn't alive in the '60s. Tom Cruise to Vanilla Sky is so much better. Danny DeVito to The Good Night. Okay, but like, let's talk about a movie somebody's actually uh, heard of. Tom Cruise, Tropic Thunder, of course. Still, I'm happy. You don't make too many David Bowie connections. I'm happy with that. This is the Traveler's Motel for Guess the Game. I feel like I can tell you with authority, this is um, The Walking Dead Season 1. Yep, okay. Telltale games are like the closest thing to automatics in Guess the Game. Okay, this is Game Though Classic. I'm telling you right off the bat, Game Though Classic. Pretty sure that we are looking at Aladdin here, based on... The appearance of Aladdin's magic carpet. That's an easy one. That's an automatic for me. Oh no, it's a game that came out uh, within the last 10 years. Wait, no, I know what this is. I just can't show you it yet because I want to make sure I'm not getting an ad. <laughs> the spicy ad. Even if it was the real Strauss and List, I would not go to this. No offense, Vancouver Symphony. I'm pretty sure, though, this is Mortal Kombat. Are these not the hands of Goro? Me is Mortal Kombat 10? It is Mortal Kombat 10. Okay. I feel like on uh, Jeopardy, they would have sent that one to the judges. They might have given me that one. Now the ads, <laughs> I did look up Shirataki Konjak because I wanted to explain to my mom when I was in Kingston what the worst food I've ever eaten in my life is. See, this is what the robots don't get right. They don't understand the context for which I looked things up. I looked things up to, to show my mom the worst food I'd ever tasted. And then they said, hey, yeah, they don't get hate searching, exactly. I'm not buying, I'm, I'm not even buying real pasta. There's no way I'm buying shirataki konyaku pasta. Come on. Anyway, this is Dark Souls 2. Robots got owned on that one. Okay, single player, multiplayer co-op. Doesn't really narrow it down. It's relatively, it was more recent. It's within the last 10 years. It's not going to be Destiny 2. It could be Stardew Valley. 
Let's just toss it out there. It's more recent than 2016. It shares, it's not a role playing game. It could be an indie simulator strategy game. Hey, how's that for something? But it has single player, multiplayer, and co op. How about Rimworld? The Sip's favorite. It's something is interesting here. That's single player only. Okay, obviously, you've never heard of mods. Um, how about Factorio? It's not isometric. Okay, take the isometric out of it. Single player, multiplayer, co-op, not made in Unity. Could be an indie game. More recent than 2018. Could be a, is, could, could be a side scroller. I'm thinking of a side scroller. I'm thinking of a I'm thinking of a beat 'em up. I'm thinking of a Streets of Rage 4. It's, it's in 2019. Okay. It's not an indie game. And it is not side-scrolling, which means it's probably a first-person shooter from 2019. Which means it's Borderlands 3 again? <laughs> it's a first-person shooter that also has like a simulator or strategy in it. Just doing the matrix multiplication. I don't want my clue yet. I, I want to use it later because I think we can narrow it down. I want to say that it's like Escape from Tarkov. It's not Escape from Tarkov. That came out in 2016. Okay, I'll take my clue then. The clue is it's a shooter simulator. It's Rust. Rust is way older, depending on when it came out, I guess. Because I don't know if it's technically officially out. A, first, a, a shooter, first-person shooter simulator. In from 2019. I feel like Fallout 76 is too old. Is, wait, did we, did we guess a Bethesda game already? We did not. It is too old, but your platforms are perfect. PS4, Xbox One. In 2019. First person... I'm going to know it, but I don't know it right now. It's uh, Greedfall. It's uh, Green Hell. Oh, Joe oh! <laughs> Calling it a sim doesn't really seem right to me, but I don't think I would have gotten it anyway. Maybe if they called it a, a Wild West, then I would have been like, okay, I get it now. The Wild West genre. There's dozens of us. Four Words, 1999. A comedy drama that is hated by critics, loved by the audience. I don't have an answer for you immediately, but this is right in my, my demo. I'll call this um, Four Words. She freaking hate me? How about he said, she said? Even the film's mild, candy-coated satire is eventually jettisoned in favor of an earnest plea for tolerance and letting people be who they are. First thing I'm thinking is office space, because I know it's the right era, but it's not enough words. We'll pass this one. We'll call this one um, Gregory's Adventure. We'll call it um, El Bulli, Cooking in Progress. First time feature director Jamie Babbitt's pink drenched comedy is amusing and good natured but necessarily thin. Is this But I'm a Cheerleader? Oh! Not a lot of people were sniffing on that one. Such a good movie. Let me, let me blow your mind right now. I've never seen it, but I do remember my parents watching it when I was a kid. I believe it is about a high school cheerleader who comes out to her parents and then they send her to like um, anti-lesbian summer camp or something like that. With unexpected results. With comedic results. You pretty much got it. 
The audience loves it. The critics, the Shlomo Schwartzberg did not enjoy that for boxoffice.com. She cleans up, not going to lie. What do you mean by that? She, when she, she cleans up like the way you do before you go out and see Clerks 2? Or she cleans up like the way you do at a poker table? Both? Okay. This looks like um, Ireland in the mid-1990s. I'm going to say this is 1996. I'm going to say this is 1998. You can feel this just looks more like Final Fantasy uh, IX to me than it looks like Final Fantasy VII. 2001, holy cow! It's Final Fantasy X, brother! This is Washington, D.C. in the very early 1990s. We're going to say this is 91. 86, okay? He's washed. People are biking here. This must be like the 2010s. It's the same joke every time. <laughs> I mean, there's horses and buggies. There's no cars whatsoever. I don't have an answer for you here. I, I, I think it's pre-1910. I'll give this like a 1904. 1905. He's no longer washed. We've had this exact image before. I wish my man would put socks on if he's on an important meeting, but that's okay. This is definitely 2020. I'll take my points. Holy cow. I didn't have this high school experience. But in today's increasing ages of uh, isolation, it seems very funny that like you and your friend would go on a double date in your car and then just like make out with your partners next to each other. That shit is so funny to me. I mean, you're in high school. I get it. You have like limited opportunities for privacy, but like it's very... <laughs> It's just, it's just funny to me. I don't, I don't have anything else to say about it. I just like it's. I just can't imagine being like, "Hey, let's go on a double date. You pick us up, and then we'll both like you make out on the hood of the car, and we'll make out on the trunk, and then at some point, I don't know, we'll just go home, I guess." And somebody took a photo. This definitely seems like Stranger Things era. Like I'm gonna say this is 1983. Oh! <laughs> He's not washed anymore. 4341. Holy cow. You know, it was the girl on the right. Her shorts just screamed like 1980s to me. Well, we got an interesting housel today because we appear to be on Tatooine. Where are the two sons? I feel like there's like an obligation. Listen, I'm not a I'm not a the guy who's like your yard always has to look nice. But like if your yard looks like this, you have to paint your house or something. Like it's just it's just too much taupe, you know? It's too much beige in the same area. It's not a hideous house. It's just like the it's a rim world aesthetic. That's a great way to describe it. It does look like it kind of looks like it's made of like, like turf, which is fine. There's nothing against it. I'm not. I'm, I know I keep backtracking, but like, it seems like a nice house. It wouldn't surprise me if this is a million plus. Uh, okay, it would surprise me. It's in Richland, Mississippi. Okay, I'm sorry to do this, but we're pulling it like way down. That's now too low. Okay, it's fifty three hundred square feet. It has easily the worst individual accent of interior design I've seen in Housel. It just says home and family offset like eight feet above the sink. It's almost like there used to be one thing here, but th like maybe this said like faith, but then someone had a crisis and they had to take it off the ceiling. So I'm going to 5,300 square feet. 
I'll put you I'll put you 350,000. Still too low. Is I hate this, but just fine. I don't have to live here, okay? I try to resist just dunking on every house in Housel. There are times when I've been like this house actually looks nice. But I do hate this for sure. Tub is off-centered. Well, yes. But I mean, like, you use the tub. You don't look at your tub. You know what I mean? That doesn't bother me. It's just the fact that there's, like, no contrast. There's no contrast outside of the house. There's no contrast inside of the house. It looks like when I design something. It's just like, well, I, you know what? How about the white floors and gray walls? Cabinets? Mm, thinking white. Can we just make every single fixture in the house exactly the same color? So it's like I'm in a like one amorphous void with no delineating shadows or textures. What did I guess last time? I don't know. Take me up to 500. You know how the game goes. 1.35 acres built recently. The office looks out onto a pool table. I mean, I'm, listen, it's, a, a, it's not centered either. It's kind of like, it's, it, it looks like you can still play without having to use like a sawed off cue, which is okay, but... <laughs> I've never, uh, usually this chair is supposed to be in the bedroom let's take 575 still too low dude I'm, I'm washed primary on main level with two closets guest suite on other side of main level four more four more what 650 save me today's housel was a tough one 799 I was really close with uh, with a million to start with. It hurts to lose uh, to lose a housel though. You are a housel surf. <laughs> okay, you're gonna you're gonna laugh at this. I mean, it is five hundred thousand square feet. It is huge. This is Doctor Zayas from Planet of the Apes. First Planet of the Apes came out in 1969. Same year uh, we landed on the moon. Heavy emphasis on we there. We's doing a lot of heavy lifting. Have to imagine this is Los Angeles. It just looks like Los Angeles. We'll call this 1969 Los Angeles. I'll put you closer to Hollywood, I suppose. It's 19, sorry, 1967. I was two years off. Pretty close, though. I'll take my 9,600. <laughs> this looks like Italy, based, uh, based on the text. I'm not sure how well you can see that up here. I could be wrong, by the way. Giuso Giovanni. It sounds Italian. I call this Italy... And the picture looks pretty modern. Let's call this Italy 2018. I don't know. I, I'm ignorant of like uh, any recent flooding events. And, uh, you know, I mean, if any place is going to flood, like maybe it's Venice. Uh, this is such a huge risk to go Venice on this one. No, it's so far away from the rest of Italy, man. Ah, whatever. Imagine if it was right. That'd be crazy. Italy 2018. 2019 in Venice! Oh! <laughs> you gotta trust yourself. You gotta put faith in yourself. Holy cow. This is Las Vegas, because the sign that you can't really see says Las Vegas. You also, I like the idea that at some point jackpots used to be two words. It looks like a guy named Jack Potts just lives here. This has got to be Vegas like in the pre-Rat Pack days. Because when Frank Sinatra started lighting it up, it wasn't like a cowboy town. It was like, uh, you know, they had like the, the Flamingo and stuff like that. The Golden Nugget. So I say this is Vegas in like the 19... Maybe it's Old Vegas? Which one of you is Old Vegas? This is the Strip, right? Oh, no, Paradise is the Strip. Old Vegas is probably... I don't know. <laughs> I'm over it. <laughs> Decided I don't really care. 
Um, let me put you over here, circa. Well, I mean, let's put you closer to paradise. Like, don't be a fool. And uh, we'll say this is like 1940. Hmm, 46. It's 1955. Original location actually would have been better. It's still okay. 73, 68. Well, it narrows down the time, that's for sure. I have to... I, can I zoom in? So this is like the Reichstag at the Berlin Olympics. Which I have to imagine was like... 1933? The second here? I don't know if this is the Reichstag. I'm assuming. I just like any opportunity to say Reichstag to show how worldly I am. It's 1933 Olympics, maybe 1934? That seems more, it's an even number. It's 1936, and we were right there. 9760. Well, I have no idea when this was, but this is a, I'm sure it's a pivotal photo. This looks like the late 1970s, and I just have to assume that this is like, I mean, this doesn't look like British regalia to me, but this does, this definitely does. So I'm going to say this is outside of Buckingham Palace in like 1976. I'll admit, I don't know exactly where Buckingham Palace is. Uh, yes, I do. It's right there. 77 is fine by me. It's 1981. I'm pretty good. 92.63. I did not know that this happened, by the way. Yes, that is a gun. There's a gun? I don't know if the contrast is off here, but yeah, that's a gun. Final score? 45,981? I mean, that's also like... It's a pretty good time guesser score. New PB. I don't know if it's a new PB, but it's pretty close. Apparently, he fired blanks to try to spook the horse. Was this Looney Tunes ass? <laughs> I'm not trying to get controversial. I'm just saying. Looney Tunes ass uh, assassination attempt. And then the horse is going to run and she, then she's going to fall off and like hit her head or something like that. Yeah, then he painted, exactly, he painted a mural that looked like uh, the stables, uh, but it actually wasn't the stables. The door was closed and he put it over like a mountain. And then the horse will like run off a cliff and it'll keep running even though it's off the cliff. And then it'll look down and hold up a sign that says like, uh-oh, and then it'll go pew. This seems not that hard. Today I'd like to go from San Marino to Greece. You'll go Italy. You'll follow Italy to Croatia. Please tell me you share a border. Oh, to Slovenia. My mistake. My mistake. To, okay, now Croatia. I'm going to take it down to Albania. Oh, <laughs> To Romania, to no, 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 to so what, what, what fucking country are you, dude? <laughs> Feels like Hungary is not necessary. Is there a is this perhaps Bosnia and Herzegovina? Uh, it wasn't necessary, but okay. And then, like, isn't Serbia the connector here? Uh, <laughs> then it must be North Macedonia. Hey, okay, okay. 
Austria, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, Greece. Well, that makes a lot of sense as well. Still pretty good. We, we got a little streak going on in Traveler, which is rare for me. There's a lot of countries and not a lot of space. I'm not used to that as a North American. Me, when I'm North American and I have to wait in line for five seconds for anything, I don't know where I'm going with this one. <laughs> Me, when I'm from the Midwest and I'm not used to, I'm used to every restaurant being empty when I go in and then I go to a restaurant and there's a lineup. So I immediately go to the front because I assume that something's wrong with their logistics and they need some help. <laughs> 